let's go ahead and do exercise six. Exercise six, we're gonna go ahead and implement test code parallelization. Here's how you can do that, it's really easy. All you need is uh, the Maven Surefire plugin and it's gonna work with Maven Surefire. And then part two, you're going to improve, impl remove the implicit weights and replace them with explicit weights. And then the last part is you're basically just going to clean everything up, um, remove the remaining duplications and um, constantly instantiating the web driver weight. You'll notice that duplication here, for example, let's take a look. Actually, we don't have that here, but what we do have is these find element calls that should be replaced with a web driver weight. Uh, because find element is an, uses an implicit weight and we should bypass that um, and use web driver weights instead. So go ahead and implement that. Um, when you come back, I am, will show you the answer. All right, so how did you do with your code? Hopefully you were able to achieve the final solution. Uh, it might be a little bit different from mine in terms of methodology, but ultimately what I'm going to show you here is the final production ready automation best practices code that you can take right now and start utilizing at your workplace to help you achieve the ultimate test automation results. I'm going to walk you here step by step through all of it. The very first thing we want to do is make sure that we can run all of this in parallel. So I'm going to run my Maven test. Let's come back here to Sauce Labs. You can see we've got two tests executing in parallel. Here they are, of course, uh, depending on your account, you can execute up to, I can execute up to 100 tests in parallel. If I had more of those, I would show you that. That's the power of parallelization, is that if I ran all my tests in parallel, I could have 100 tests and they would finish in about 10 seconds, which would be really amazing. So that worked. Let's go through our classes here and analyze what happened. So first, let's take a look at our should be able to check out with items uh, test. Look how easy to read it and understand it it is, right? It is self-explanatory, everything that goes on here. Um, you can probably make a little bit of improvement here. I was looking at this line of code, set page state. I can probably clean that up to make it more... Uh, understandable about what that does, but the rest of the test is really easy to understand about what it does and what it's asserting. Same thing with our login feature test. What does it test? Well, that we should be able to log in, all right? And then when you look in here, we have a login page that we're visiting, we're asserting that it, the login page is loaded, and then we're logging in and asserting that the inventory page is loaded as well. A, a very easy to understand test, self-explanatory, no need to dig into the code underneath to understand what this test case is doing. Remember where we started our test case was so horrible and I hope after this presentation I will never see code like that from you all ever again and I hope that I will only see code like this and in that case I'll be so happy and please send me screenshots of your code to my Twitter after you implement this I would be super excited to see your code on Twitter and uh, what you were able to do here. So besides that, let's take a look at our base page class. I've talked about the base page class a lot, uh, just to emphasize especially how you don't want to overpopulate it. Here's an example of a very good base page class that is not overpopulated and provides all the functionality to all of the page objects that actually need it. So here you can see all of the common components, right? We have the driver, we have a base URL, and we have a page weight. So these are the very common components probably in all of the base pages. If you don't have these components in your base pages, you should put them in right now. Uh, the page weight you haven't seen me add, but I added it and all that is is a new web driver weight class and I set this to a default of 10 seconds. I'm allowing my web application to take up to 10 seconds for any condition to occur before we throw a web driver timeout exception. And that is very acceptable, right? Because our page should not be loading in longer than 10 seconds anywhere, at least of my sauce demo page. Maybe your application is a little bit slower, but I wouldn't recommend that this value be too high. If this value is like 
more than a minute, then there is something extremely wrong with not only the way you're doing the automation, but with your application as well, because then I would ask, why is your application taking up to a minute to load? Yes, I understand there may be some latency, which might add, you know, 50 to hundred percent, but why is it taking 60 or more seconds? That's a pretty absurd amount of time. And then I uh, introduce here the base URL. And so you can see, let's see here how we use this. Uh, so here I'm using the is loaded class. And remember before we only had the implicit weights. I talked to you already about implicit weights. We completely removed them and we're only using explicit weights. And so now I'm using an explicit weight here to check for a specific condition. Uh, this condition actually is not the best. Um, I should have done a more dynamic weight on an actual element. Um, I, I think I just got too lazy. If you have a better explicit weight condition here that actually checks for an element to be in a specific state, kudos to you. You beat me. That is better. This is actually a poor explicit weight condition because uh, the page can still open, but it may not render. So you can still, you know, open up the page, but nothing will show up on the page. And so if that's the case, this will pass. However, it shouldn't because our page doesn't render. Uh, here is more. Um, here is how we're using the uh, visit method. Remember, I told you the two options. I decided to go with the first option because it allows each of the pages to define their own visit method if they need it. And then it just does it in such a manner. Uh, here's an, the other page that's extracted. You can see I put some future to do's for you here because if you're noticing the is loaded method is becoming uh, some duplication in our test. So we could potentially move it to the base page class, or we could perform some kind of different operations to make sure that all of the pages have an is loaded method. And that is the is loaded method. And the is loaded method is appropriately implemented for each of the page objects. And then again, you can see here, I'm using the page weight class that's waiting until some specific condition. This condition is way better, right? Because I'm validating that there's the logo is visible, uh, that the logo is actually displayed here, which is really good. Um, and so that is pretty much it. As you can see, these are, as I mentioned, the highest quality tests. Again, little minor tweaks could be made to them, but they are production ready. I would be proud to hand this over to any employer and start running this in production. It's extremely stable. Take them to your employer, use all of these best practices, and let me know how it works out for you.